I want to ask you, does this not result naturally as the evolutionary culmination of the, what I call the academic hunger, hunger games? I mean, you start off and get into the best college, you need to do all sorts of activities and get good grades and take good tests and, and, and so forth. Then you go to college and you're competing in the physical sciences. Let's just say you're gonna be a theoretical physicist. You're competing with some of the brightest minds who have ever lived in your peer group. You gotta outlast them to get a good uh, good PhD slot. And then you gotta uh, shine as a PhD student, get the attention of your advisor. Then you gotta get a good letter of recommendation and, and a job offer, a prestigious postdoc. Then you gotta get a good, it's just a mind night. It's gotten so much worse since 20 years ago when I went through the, the final right. rung in this so, ladder. So, so and then tenure, yeah, go ahead. We have to stop this. This is how do you stop it? How do you how do you undo a thousand year old uh, tradition? This is not a thousand year old tradition. This has to do with Vannevar Bush, the endless frontier, the expansion of the post secondary education system. You know, I, I was think I was hanging out with the provost at uh, UCSD, and he didn't even understand the effect of the Eilberg Amendment of 1976 by uh, by Dole in 1980, the uh, fraudulent NSF and NAS. Uh, projections of a looming shortage that opened the floodgates of foreign labor at the universities, that misclassification is student apprenticeship. There's an entire recent horrible history of turning the modern professor into a serf, not just the graduate student into a serf, but the attempt to destroy academic freedom. If you cannot tell people to screw off and know that you are still funded the next day and you can still come into your office, the field is lost. 